My father. He was always this mysterious character I knew nothing about. Well, that was until I attended his funeral, where not only I learned about my father, but I learned about the deep, dark family secret. I never knew anything about my father to begin with. The only accounts I had were from my mother, who could not decide whether she loved or hated him. Whenever I asked her to let me meet him, a shoe would be thrown at my head. That was when I was younger and before she turned to the bottle, making it clear that since I could not help her financially, I was of no use to her. My older sister, Ariel, got much better treatment than me. Maybe because she used me as a scapegoat to avoid punishment. She also had a job, so she gave mom money. With that money, my mother could decide to drink it all the way, then I would have to fend for her myself when it came to food. That saying of, it takes a village to raise a child, could not have been truer, for I was raised by the neighborhood people. The funny part was that those who were better off saw me as nothing more than a dirty rat begging for scraps. While those that did not have much for their families, and those who could not take care of themselves showed me the most kindness, by the time I turned 16, I had enough of the abuse. My mother could lose her temper over the fact that I've just taken a dollar to get myself something to eat. She constantly drilled into me the story that she started working at the age of 13, and that I was just a lazy bum. And then she met Randy, which was when she decided that even my breathing was getting in the way of her relationship. So, she threw me out when he came over. I knew what time comes in, and what time to leave so that I would not clash with Randy. Randy drank and smoked like a chimney and looked to hit me on the back of the head as a greeting. Randy was too friendly with my sister Ariel, who would slip her some money or cigarettes when he thought that no one was looking. I could see warnings by my mom that her beloved Randy and my sister were playing her, but I shut up because she deserved it. When I turned 16, I could not handle it anymore. There was nothing much for me in that town. School sucked on the days I bothered to attend, and my mother hated the sight of me. The day that really, uh, sealed the deal with me was when I asked her where my dad was, so I could go stay with him because I felt that she just simply did not like me. Well, that was when she lectured me about how ungrateful I was because she did more than my useless father ever could. I wanted to know what was so bad between them that made them so separate. The only info I had was a conversation I had with Ariel, where she told me that when Dad Stale stayed with us, Mom was always happy and singing. So, I wanted to know my dad, for I hoped that at least he would love me and not treat me like a dog as the rest of the family did. When I asked about my father that night, she told me that enough was enough, and went into her room and came out with her spiked belt. I knew what was coming and dodged it. It ended up hitting her, which was when Randy entered the room, took one look at the situation, and punched me in the nose. I felt my soul leave my body and come back. Then I was on the floor and she was hitting me with the spiked belt. I was laying in a pool of my own blood when they were finally done, and they decided to leave and go get some food. She told me that she wanted to come back to a spotless house. I was so angry, scared, and upset that she expected me to clean up the mess. Anything was better than this, so I packed my stuff and left. I stayed on the streets for over three years. I got into drugs, petty theft, and did time, but luckily I did not get any criminal record. When I was at rock bottom... 19 years old with no education or purpose in life, I knew that I could not let myself die just like that. So I got clean, I got a job, and then started the business of printing t-shirts with my friend Rico, who was a beast at designing. I had an infinity for picking up any software or machinery, and a knack for numbers, and was very good at selling things. Well, we worked our day jobs and hustled at night, after four long years, we now had a very successful printing and designing business. I have my own car and apartment now. I'll probably buy a house if I get married one day. As for my mother and sister, I didn't hear about them for years. Sometimes, when I reached rock bottom, I considered going back to them. 
But then I remembered that final day. News about them started to trickle into my life strangely enough. It was like someone opened a portal and some ghosts of my past were now flooding into my life. The other day, we had a client come in. A man who appeared very familiar. It was a guy I went to school with. He was shocked to see me, barely recognizing me. He was like, no way. And I don't blame him. No one thought I could make it. He told me that my mother and sister had been going through a lot. My mom and Randy broke up after, well, he started selling her stuff for money. Not long after, my mother became sick and no one knew what it was. My sister, who's now 27, now had to take care of her. My sister eventually furthered her education and was working as a manager at a hotel. I wondered what sort of people they were now, but I told my old schoolmates not to tell anyone that this was where I was. I had to fight the memories of my childhood for years, and having them back in my life just when I'm flourishing made me shiver. I should probably get therapy for this, but not now. So, imagine how I felt when several weeks after I saw my schoolmate, I got a message from an unknown number. I thought that it was either my mom or my sister and was about to delete it until I saw my father's name pop on the screen. I knew his name, not his last name, the message was brief, alerting me that my father had passed away and that I was welcome to attend his funeral. It was a cruel joke that women was trying to worm her way back into my life by offering me what I've begged for years to give me. Yes, that was the only way I could explain why the heck my mother was letting me know my father's name and where he stayed, telling me that we would see each other there. I sent a response that she could go to heck and that she would never message me again. But after that, I was on edge. I wondered what sort of person he was and if he would have loved me. I wondered if he would have stopped mom from turning to alcohol. I wondered why he did not look for his son all these years. I told Rico about it and he told me that quote, You have to go so you can get some closure, man. I thought long and hard about it, though I suspected that I was going to regret it and I decided to go. So that Sunday, I drove to the church where the funeral service was to be held. When I got there, there was a man at the door, seemingly checking for invites. What kind of important man was my father for him to need invitations to his funeral? When I got up there, I recognized a head of hair that I could never mistake. Ariel. And hanging on to her arm was my mother. And they appeared to be arguing with the man at the front. So, they were inviting me to a funeral that even they could not get into. This was an absolute joke. I went up and asked what's going on. And my sister said, uh, you came? With shock in her voice. My mother did not even look at me in my eyes. She was telling the man at the door, I am the mother of his kids. I saw him days before he passed and he wanted me here. While the man was telling her, I'm under instructions not to let you enter no matter what, ma'am, please leave. I interrupted and told the man I was Reginald's son and I was there for the funeral, but he told me that Reginald's wife did not want anyone claiming to be family to enter. And then a man, who looked very familiar, opened the door, asking what the commotion was about. He looked at me, and I could not help feeling like I knew him. But where could I have met him? That was pushed to the back of my head when an elegantly dressed woman pushed him aside and told him that it was her husband's funeral, and he did not get to call the shots. She told him that we were not going to enter, period. He just nodded at the man in the front door, and he stepped aside and let us in. I heard him and the woman bickering behind us. I took a seat at the back as far away as I could from my mother and sister. I wondered why they called me here when we had not spoken in years. Little did I know that this was just the beginning of the drama that ended up ruining the funeral. Well, the reverend spoke a few words, then said that Reginald's wife wants to speak. Her name was Anna May, and she was the lady who tried to prevent us from attending. The man who told us to go in stood next to her. Then the lady next to them whispered, That boy looks so much like his father, it's frightening. And I thought, oh crap. That was why my dad did not come for me. That man was my brother. I was sickened. Sitting there while the family's dad chose was standing up there. 
I went to go up and went to the bathroom and had to do all I could to not scream and punch the walls. This was too much for me on one day. And here I thought my mother was full of it. Turns out my dad was also a big old fat liar. I called my best friend and told him that I was about to leave, but he told me to go back in there and sit down. I had every right to be there. So that's what I did, even though I was not feeling like it. I stayed in the background for most of the time, and I did not show myself when he was being buried. Or when people were speaking, because there was nothing I wanted to say about him. He was just a stranger to me. I was just thankful that my mom did not start any drama. She was sitting in the corner with my sister, and they both seemed well-behaved. My sister could not even look me in the eyes when she saw me, though. I made a mental note to talk to her before I left, but was not so sure about what. After he had been buried, we all went back to their house. The house was so darn big, beautiful, modern, and, well, amazing. I walked around the house looking at the pictures of my dad and his family. They looked happy. They were the perfect magazine family, matching outfits and trips around the globe while I was sleeping outside the house because mom wanted privacy with sleazy Randy. As I was looking at my brother's graduation gift, someone tapped me on the shoulder and it was my brother. He said, uh, Hi, I'm sure that we've not had a chance to introduce each other. I I'm your brother. Joshua, but you can just call me Josh. I said hi to him, not sure what more I should even say. Well, the more I looked at him, the more I saw the similarities between us. He also had similarities with my father. He apologized about earlier on and told me that his mother and mine never got along, but he wanted to finally meet me and our sister. I asked Josh why he was reaching out now, but he told me that it was not his first attempt to reach out to me. He had come to my shop nearly six months ago, but he was nervous about meeting me, so he left. And now that I thought about it, I had seen him before, but thought he was just another client that he disappeared. I didn't think further about it. I asked what he wanted from me, and he had everything. A family that was not too much of a mess, a childhood with my father, and clearly enough money. He said that he wanted to just get to know me. I told him that I had no interest and I was upset about everything and everyone in my so-called family. Yet, here was the golden prince who had everything he ever needed saying he wanted to get to know me. I told him that my sister and mom were there if he wanted to get to know his family, but I'm simply not interested. I saw the way his mother had been looking at me all day. I recognized that look from my own mother, how she looked at me. I was unwanted in the past and I'm unwanted now. I told Josh not to worry about me, that I was doing just fine with no family, and that Dad had years to reach out to me, but he did not. Well, then he told me this Dad was sorry for what he did, but before he passed, he asked Josh to find me. After all, I was the oldest son, and he wanted me and Josh to handle the business. Josh told me how much the business was worth, and that he wanted to share it with me because that was what was right. Well, I wondered what was wrong with Josh, and I started laughing at him, asking him why he did not just keep quiet and keep the business to himself. Josh was about to answer me when we heard the shouting. So I put down his graduation picture and followed him to the living room, where my mother, barely able to stand, was shouting at Anna Mae, who had taken off her shoes and was trying to attack her back. Well, my mom was calling Anna Mae a homewrecker. I turned them out and listened to the ladies beside me who told me the whole story. My mother and Anna Mae had been friends year back when my mom and dad were together. My dad was just starting to make a little bit of money. Well, I should say a lot of money. And he had two kids with my mom. Anna Mae, who was unmarried, decided to try her luck with my dad. My dad dumped my mom and the kids and married Anna Mae. They moved and started a family of their own, and my mom was clearly drunk, calling Anna Mae a disgrace for stealing her best friend's man. She might have kept my mom away for all those years, but Reginald called my mom when he was on the deathbed and told her she needed to be at his burial. But Anna Mae responded that Reginald wanted nothing to do with her after her burial. 
That is when my mother moved faster than I thought she could and landed a slap right across Anime's face. Anime just laughed while holding her cheek and said, The fact that you're attacking me means that you know the truth, you wretched woman. The truth is that one of your kids is not Reginald's. There was silence. You could even hear a pen drop. What does she mean, Mom? I was the first one to break the silence. She's lying. She doesn't want me to claim what's rightfully ours. Ariel is not Reginald's daughter. That's why he left you. You cheated on him with his best friend. As if that day could not get any better. Now, it was just the raging dumpster fire. Guys, I do have some very exciting news about this story. After I finished making this video, there was actually an update that came out, and you will not believe this. It's going to be the next video on the channel, so make sure you stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, put on bell notifications, whatever, because you will not want to miss part two of this story. It's coming out just a little bit later, and guys, let me tell you right now, if you think the drama in the first story was something, just wait till you find out some more secrets. And man, you think this funeral popped off? You've seen nothing yet. My name's Mr. Redito, guys. Thank you for joining me on today's stories. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait for part two. I'll see you there.